Canada really has to examine its own approach to these people. Uh, in any case, there is, as far as I'm aware, no evidence that any Indian government body had anything to do with it. We are seeing openly posters talking about kill Indians, kill Hindus, drive Hindus out of Canada, uh, go ahead and, and, and attack the uh, diplomats. Po photos and names of, of prominent Indian diplomats seem to be very much like a case of extreme political pandering. My thoughts are that it's an extremely disappointing development. Um, you know, many Indians have been seething with frustration at the way in which uh, people who are, uh, if not terrorists themselves, are flagrantly inciting violence against our country, talking about the dismemberment of India, have been able to get uh, complete freedom uh, and sanctuary in a country like Canada. But we have valued our relationship with Canada and we have not escalated our concerns beyond a certain point, though we have, I'm sure, conveyed them at various levels to the Canadian authorities. It's a relationship we've always valued. The trade is, 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 is at considerable levels. We have a large Indian diaspora population there, 1.7 million people in a country of just 40 million. We also have, of course, a large number of Indian students, and the number has been increasing. So there have been a lot of things we value in the relationship. Um, I would have expected that Canada would value the relationship as well. But uh, the extraordinary decision of the Prime Minister to go public with an allegation without a shred of evidence uh, of Indian government complicity in a murder in his country shocks me, to be very frank. Uh, I believe um, the story is that it was triggered by the fact that a, uh, a media leak was about to happen of this allegation. A media story is one thing for a prime minister, for political reasons, to want to get ahead of a media story. Uh, and and uh, you know, it, it really looks like it's uh, uh, doubling down on the pandering to a certain political element uh, in that country. Uh, we know the government uh, is, is uh, dependent upon certain support, um, and perhaps this is why they needed to do that. They have elections also coming up very soon. So for all of these reasons, Canadian politics has led to a situation where a very valued relationship between two countries has been thrown into jeopardy, and I am really surprised the Canadians would do that. And our consulate is working there. We have said that if, you, uh, if, we, if they face any problem, they can contact our consulate. Uh, there is an advisory which has also been issued. Uh, looking at the way the diplomats were fired, uh, right from, uh, if, you, if you say in Canada, and now uh, one diplomat was also expelled uh, from uh, in, in New Delhi as well. Uh, how do you look at this balance which is going on? Because this no, there is a classic case of tit for tat going on. Mm -hmm. So the Canadians expel uh, an Indian uh, diplomat, Indians expel a Canadian diplomat. Canada does something else, India does something else in return. Uh, today, India has initiated some action. I don't know how that's going to be responded to on that side. It's most unfortunate. I really believe that we must arrest this deterioration in the relationship. Obviously, when there is any concern of this nature, the responsible thing to do would have been to come and have strong, uh, closed-door conversations uh, in, in, uh, in, in India with the Indian authorities, uh, but never to take it to a point where publicly you are throwing an entire relationship uh, into such a disarray. I think that's for the Canadians to explain, because honestly, um, there has been a lot of frustration, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. uh, from our side, because we know that these are not just uh, you know, airy-fairy rhetoricians. These are people who have actually wielded weapons, who have been complicit in mass murder and mass mayhem. Uh, and therefore, they're, they're not just uh, uh, an ordinary situation. Uh, you must understand that in the old days, emigration meant people went to another country and assimilated there, got involved in that country's politics. Mm -hmm. We are now seeing a new phenomenon where immigrants to Canada have become Canadian citizens but are not doing anything in Canadian politics. They're focusing on how to actually do damage to their country of origin. Uh, to my mind, that is a very dangerous development. And uh, Canada really has to examine its own approach to these people. It's all very well to claim outrage that a citizen has been, uh, has been killed in Canada. Uh, in any case, there is, as far as I'm aware, no evidence that any Indian government body had anything to do with it because we know that, uh, unfortunately, this fringe uh, terrorist group has a number of factions and there have been gangland-style killings of various members of these various groups, including one today. So um, uh, my own view is that there could have been any other explanation for what happened. In any case, um, whatever is happening why their own citizens are allowed with impunity to behave in this manner. 
uh, threatening the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and good uh, uh, interests of, of a friendly country is something only the Canadians can answer. Well, I think it's, a, it's certainly a, 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 an unwelcome step simply because in all these matters, uh, people-to-people relations are important. Many of the Canadians who come here as visitors are actually people of Indian origin visiting their, their families. Don't forget that 99% of the Indians in Canada and the Sikhs in Canada are completely uh, normal, uh, innocent people with no interest in, in, in this kind of violence or fomenting of violence. So uh, they will also be hurt by this, uh, as well as a regular Canadian tourists who uh, would be a re- valuable source of revenue for our hotels and so on. So I think it's unfortunate that it's come to this matter, but I can understand the concern that the Indian government feels that if in the process of processing visas, you're vulnerable to attack by these irresponsible elements whom Canada is not able to protect you against, then it becomes a problem. I think uh, if Canada had taken a robust approach saying that they will look after the security of diplomats stationed in their country, uh, it would have been a different story. Uh, But unfortunately, we are seeing openly posters talking about kill Indians, kill Hindus, drive Hindus out of Canada, uh, go ahead and, and, and attack the uh, diplomats. Po- photos and names of, of prominent Indian diplomats have been shown at rallies. There was a rally in which the assassination of Indira Gandhi was, was depicted in gory detail as if it's something to be celebrated. And all of this has been functioning in Canada in the name of free speech. I find that very strange and very difficult to understand. Certainly, I can assure you that in our country, no foreign elements would be allowed to threaten diplomats of another country or another country's territorial integrity without very severe action being taken by the government of India. Uh, And therefore, we are reasonably within our rights to expect the same thing from the Canadians. I don't want to now start giving commentary on the words uh, words of an Indian state spokesman. I'm sure that the government would have thought about the implications of such a statement before making it. Uh, It does seem, to be very honest, to be a a, a sort of slap in the face uh, for a country that um, uh, till very recently, anyway, we had good relations with. I hope that we can arrest this deterioration. I hope we can rebuild the relationship again. Uh, Certainly getting this particular present-day problem off the table as quickly as possible is indispensable. But on that, the ball is very much in the Canadians' court. Um, They have to share with the Indians what is the basis for their suspicion. And then India should decide what action to be taken. What, what is so ironic about all this is between two friendly countries, let us argue for argument's sake. I mean, I think this could have been a gangland killing between different Khalistani factions. But if for argument's sake, somebody associated with the Indian government had actually done this, what is the right thing to do? The right thing to do would be for the Canadians to meet with the Indians behind closed doors, say this is the evidence we've got, one of your chaps or an agent or whatever it is that was involved, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a terrible thing you've done because you've really uh, infringed on our sovereignty. This is not acceptable to us in future. But, um, uh, you know, whatever action is to be taken, quietly withdraw the people who gave these orders from our country, and we will forget about it, but we will not uh, uh, let you understand. We want you to understand that we don't appreciate this kind of... That kind of language. I mean, frankly, uh, these things happen between countries, I'm sure. And from my experience, uh, uh, you can deliver tough messages in private, but the moment you go public you create a situation that inevitably will provoke a backlash. And I'm really surprised that a a government would do a thing like this. A prime minister, no less, would do a thing like this. And it does does seem to be very much like a case of extreme political pandering uh, to certain interests in Canada uh, associated with his party. And and, and I think that's that's not the way you treat a friendly government without uh, paying any heed to the diplomatic consequences thereof. Look, we have been advocating a women's reservation bill. We passed one, as you know, in 2010 in the Rajya Sabha. Uh, the, the, uh, it would have been the easiest thing in the world for the government to just retrieve that text and pass it again. But what they've chosen to do is to amend the text in such a way as to introduce two new conditions. One is a census. And as you know, the 2021 census didn't take place, and they have still not announced a new date for the census. Then secondly, a delimitation, which will only follow from a census. Now, with two major sort of milestones that have to be crossed before the bill is implemented, and neither milestone has a date attached, it looks to me very much like another one of these celebrated BJP jumlas, where you promise something you have no intention of delivering. And that seems to me what has happened in this bill. So um, it was striking that even parties that had objected in the past 
uh, to this bill, voted along with it now, uh, and with the sole exception of one party of two, men, two MPs, we have had an enormous uh, unanimity uh, amongst the Lok Sabha members yesterday, and I'm sure we'll see something similar in the Rajya Sabha today. But when will it actually come into effect? Only the BJP government can answer.